Okay, guys. So, because I was trying to make you know the lecture at least nine minutes a piece so it can be easier for me to upload. Um, I was talking about. Now I want to talk a little about compensation. How does this thing compensate? Now that you know the relationship between bicarbs and pH and pHCO2, now just using words without even take telling you anything. Let's say your bicarb goes up, right? Like that. And your pH automatically goes up. The way your body actually compensates is by what? Actually, you use you have to go down below. So basically, here's the trick, guys. If anything is happening up here, right? You have to go down for compensation. So let me kind of put that in a loose description for you. Let me erase this. Alright, so let's pick bicarb. Just for an illustration. If your bicarb goes up, let's say bicarb is greater than 24. Let's call it 27 or 28. Automatically, you know your pH will go up. So we said your regular pH is between 7.45. So it's probably going to be greater than 7.45. Now, this is happen happening metabolically. And I told you at the beginning, this is a bad, this is actually a battle between your lungs and your kidneys. If you just know that, this is a lung kidney phenomenon. That's how I can put it for you. Because whatever happens in your body, you see the lungs are compensating or the kidneys is compensating. You see that one or the other, right? So what you have to know is when bicarb is increased and pH is also high, the only way, you can't, you, you, there's nothing, you, it's like, you know, it's basically, you've done everything you can possibly do up here, right? It's all metabolic problem at this point, which I'm not going to even mention which kind of metabolic problem it is. The only way you can compensate is to come down. So, the only way that can come, compensate, which is respiratory, which I told you guys, it's the lungs. And we'll talk about it when, when, when I kind of go over this, uh, relationship in a minute but obviously the only way now my pH is going high but I don't want it too high I don't want it too like too basic I want to bring it down to that homeostatic you know balance so the only way I can do that is actually the inverse which is pHCO2 right the only way I can do that to actually bring this pH down like this is to increase pHCO2 right that's basically what's going to do the trick. So it's a respiratory compensation. And I'm not even going to even dive into it, whether it's alcohol or acidosis. But that's how you think about it. And the same thing happens, let's say your bicarb goes down. If it goes down, automatically your pH is going to drop. If your pH drops, the only way you can bring it back up is by bringing this down. Do you see how easy it is? So basically, you're kind of either going up or going down. The same thing. If you start from the bottom, for example, let's pick PSCO2, right? I'm gonna erase some of this stuff out, out of the way. If you just play with this for a minute, you'll see exactly what I'm saying. If PSCO2 is going up, if that's where your primary problem is coming from, that means automatically this will go down. The only way, the only way I can fix this, I can't do anything about downstairs anymore. I have to go, so that's a respiratory problem, right? The only way is I have to go metabolic. And it, the guy that does me metabolic, that fixes stuff, is the kidneys. So the kidneys, basically for me to bring this pH back up, I have to increase by car. Did you see what I'm saying? That is just that easy. Let's play with a, another line. So, let's assume PC, PSCO2 goes down. That's, let's say, your primary problem. pH is going to go up. We don't want the blood pH to be up, guys. We want it to be low. The only way we can bring it back down is to do what? Lose bicarb. That's the only way. The other one, you have to gain more bicarb so you can bring the pH back up. So, it's just a bunch of just... Going up, going down, going up, going down. So this is kind of like a little introduction. So I don't want to get you guys all confused yet at all. Because the next thing we're going to talk about is actually metabolic acidosis. For medical students, they want to know everything. Oh, 
metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, uh, what else? respiratory alkalosis and respiratory acidosis. And by the time you say it so many times, you don't know which one is which, which one is causing what. And it's like, if you know the right, you don't have to memorize the left. If you know the left, you don't have to memorize the right. You sort of kind of have to know a general overview of what might cause them. But don't, don't, don't try to memorize two things that are different. No one, and the other one is the other one. You get what I'm saying? Because if you're trying to know, this is the problem. Medicals always do this. Oh, which one is metabolic acidosis again? And actually, to be honest, in the hospital, what you're going to see most often is acidosis. All over the place. It's always there. And the next lecture, what I'm going to do is actually break down metabolic acidosis both biochemically to show you where biochemistry fits into the picture because nobody tells you where these things are coming from. Then we're going to talk about the pathology and the pathophysiology, what causes these things. Hey, it will make a lot more sense when I start, okay? And we're still sticking with this formula, guys. We're not going away, okay? So sit back and watch out, and I'll be right with you guys in a minute, all right? Thank you.